Let's talk a little more about airspace for glider pilots. There are, of course, other types of airspace beyond the A through G classifications. These are often referred to by the term special use airspace. These areas don't have specific weather and cloud clearance requirements, but inherit them from the A through G airspace classifications that they exist within. We'll start with the most relevant and restrictive and work towards the least restrictive as we cover them all. Temporary flight restrictions, or TFRs, may be one of the most relevant types of special use airspace to the glider pilot. Like the name implies, they are temporary, though some may be in effect for quite a long time and are not depicted on the chart. They are available online at tfr.faa.gov and need to be part of your pre-flight routine. TFRs may be established for a variety of reasons, such as firefighting zones, air shows, sporting events, theme parks, VIP visits, and other security areas. They can be searched for on the graphical maps page on the FAA website, and if a close one is found, the details can be viewed. The details of the TFR will provide the lateral and vertical dimensions, as well as the restrictions, procedures, and contact info. Some may only be a few hundred feet high. Others may extend to 18,000 feet and above. Having the frequency of the controlling agency available is a great asset should you be forced to enter the TFR's boundaries and may help to avoid resulting trouble. The privately run SoaringData.info site allows TFRs and other airspace and data to be downloaded for use in planning programs ranging from CU to Google Earth and in-flight devices. Having a TFR displayed on your navigation device is a great way to be able to avoid it. It's often not obvious when a TFR is in effect. Do not rely on the local glider port bringing them to your attention. Prohibited areas are just like they sound. You may not enter them. They are permanently established areas and printed on the sectional charts as a blue hashed outline with a P designator and a number. The details are found in the chart's legend. Examples include areas around the White House and sensitive national security sites, but also the Boundary Waters Canoe Area in northern Minnesota. Restricted areas are areas where flight may also be prohibited, but they are not necessarily always in operation. They are depicted on the sectional charts with a blue hashed outline, but have an R designator. Their details are also in the sectional chart legend, and their status may be obtained by ATC. These areas often contain military activity that is extremely hazardous to other aircraft, such as live artillery firing, aerial gunnery, or guided missiles. When these areas are active, they are often referred to as hot. A warning area looks similar to a restricted area, though its designator is a W. They contain the very same types of hazards as restricted areas. However, they only exist beyond three miles from the U.S. shore, where the U.S. government does not have full jurisdiction. Alert areas are designated with a magenta hashed outline with the A designator and a box indicating the activity. They contain activities that don't need a waiver or special permission, such as high volume of training or other unusual aerial activity. Permission is not required to enter an alert area, but additional caution is certainly advised. Military Operations Areas, or MOAs, are depicted on the sectional chart with a magenta hashed outline. They have name designations such as Able East. Additional information on the particular MOA is also provided in the sectional chart legend. You'll often find MOAs closely associated with restricted areas. While permission is not required to enter an MOA, extreme caution is. A Terminal Radar Service Area, or TERSA, is somewhat of a leftover from the designation of the A through G classes of airspace. Their purpose is to provide radar services to IFR and participating VFR aircraft. The primary airport will be within Class D airspace, as shown with a dashed blue outline, while the dimensions of the TERSA itself are shown with a black border and black altitude ranges for the vertical boundaries. Participation is optional, but encouraged. Glider pilots should consider the area to potentially have above average levels of air traffic and use caution. The contact frequency is displayed in the chart legend labeled Class B, C, TERSA, and selected approach control frequencies. Airspace with blue or magenta solid lines with dots indicate national park, forest, or similar areas. Most are indicated in blue, with marine sanctuaries are depicted in magenta. All aircraft are requested to maintain at least 2,000 feet above the surface in these areas, except landing at a designated airport sites, 
with permission or in an emergency. There are not actually FAA rules, but those of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Forest Service, or the National Park Service. Many will have additional text on the chart, noting their restrictions. The primary concern in these areas is noise disturbing wildlife. Military training routes are a more subtle hazard as they often exist outside of restricted alert or MOA designated airspace. They are often used by fighter type aircraft that may not necessarily be constrained by the usual 250 knot limit below 10,000 feet. They are depicted as a light gray lines with either an IR for IFR or VR for VFR designation and an associated number. A four character number indicates the route contains no segment above 1500 feet AGL. Those that may extend higher contain only three characters. It's a good idea to have an awareness of where these routes lie around your local flying area and their altitude range. Colliders with no transponder or ADSB may add to the difficulty of these aircraft avoiding you. All of these special use airspace are depicted on the sectional chart for easy identification with the exception of the TFR. Understanding each of these areas and the hazards and restriction they carry are critical to your safety and the preservation of your certificate. Safe soaring and thanks for watching.